If you really want to make this work, if this is your dream here and you're willing to do whatever it takes, I'm telling you right now, we are in some of the best moments to become a real estate agent. And I'm going to tell you why. What's up, everybody? Today, I'm going to talk about the cold hard facts behind why I believe we're going to lose more real estate agents this year than any year in the history of the industry. And what you need to be thinking about as we inch closer and closer to this massive market shift. Now, I posted this online last week and the two most common responses I got was, why do I think this is going to happen? And great, I'm ready to see less agents in the industry. So it sounds like there's a split there between people who are kind of clueless wondering why in the world that I think this is going to happen. And then you have a group who is thinking, man, it sure would be nice because there's a lot of newbies out there making my job harder. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments about this subject, what you think as I move through this video. And while you're down there, do me a huge favor and click that little like button. Now, before I screen share my computer and give you all the numbers and statistics and data behind this theory of mine, I want to share with you my thoughts on why I believe that we have more real estate agents now than ever in history. Right now, NAR membership is topping 1.6 million agents in the U.S. And that doesn't count non-member real estate agents, which is said to be closer to the 2 to 3 million range. Now, my thoughts on why so many agents have jumped into the game, of course, has a lot to do with the pandemic and the shutdowns. And we were all sitting at home. A lot of people were laid off and they were thinking, I don't want to go back to a job that I have zero control over. I want to own my own business. Right? And real estate is a pretty easy business to get into. Right, Normally it's one class in your state and a state test and bam, you're a licensed agent. As long as you pay your fees, you do your CEs, you're ready to roll. So compared to a lot of businesses you can own, real estate is not that high a barrier of entry. Now the course is hard. You really have to study for the test and you have to pay your fees. And not all that is super easy for a lot of people but it is a lot easier than let's say opening up a restaurant or a retail store where you have very high cost getting into one of those businesses. So absolutely the pandemic played a huge part in this and has a huge role. But another part of it is the fact that us real estate agents who are out here crushing it, we make it look so easy online. Okay, we have TV shows, million dollar listing, this shows people going around and selling 10, 20, 30 million dollar properties like it's nothing. Okay, you got regular everyday agents on social media talking about sold, sold, pending, new listing, and just smiling from ear to ear, making it seem so incredibly fun and easy and exciting. Who wouldn't want to get into a business like that? I know I was the same way when I got into the business. When I got into the business, there were more billboards and people on magazines and stuff like that. And yeah, I saw the people in the magazines. I saw the people on the billboards, which is today's social media. And I thought, man, they just make it look so easy. That they're smiling, they seem happy. You know they're making a lot of money. I want in on that. And so that's what I did, I got into real estate. But I think when I got in real estate, you're seeing the same reality now as I saw back then. When I got in, guys, listen, I literally quit roofing that day and said, I retire, I'm gonna go do real estate. Come to find out 30 days later, sold zero, worked my ass off and thought, this isn't what I thought it was. I had to go back to roofing houses. Now, I was one of those top one, two, three, four, five percent that was not going to give up. So I was roofing and doing real estate at the same time, and it took me eight months to get to my first sale. It was not an easy road. And I think that's what a lot of agents are seeing right now, that it's not an easy road. It's not as easy as it looks. Now, if I'm talking to the hard workers out there, you guys don't really care how hard it's going to be. If you're like me, and you grew up roofing houses or doing something of that nature, and you don't really care how hard it's gonna be or how long it's gonna take, you're gonna be fine. But those of you who got in just to make a quick buck or something you thought was gonna be easy, no, 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 no. This job is way harder than your regular nine to five job. You show up to your regular nine to five job, you get paid no matter what happens. There could be zero production, you're getting paid. Not over here. You come over here, you gotta sell something. And listen, here's the fact of the matter right here. And if I'm talking to new agents here who haven't sold anything, you've been in the business for 10 months, whatever the case may be, listen to me right now. I do not want you to fail. 
I do not want you to get out of the business. The reason I'm making this video right now is for you, is for the agents that's on the fence right now thinking about getting out of the business. And I want you to be able to see what's fixing to happen in the market and how you can take advantage. I don't want you to think of the market shift as this moment of disappointment, like that's the last straw that just breaks and you gotta get out of the business because that's actually gonna be your pivot point. And before we get into the numbers here in just a second, I just wanna add that the reason why I do any of these thousands of videos that I've made over the five, last five years, the reason why I coach agents for free, all the whole nine yards is to reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry. And I've said it forever, I'm gonna do that two ways. I wanna teach you my philosophies, businesses unlimited, relationships over transactions, closings happen every day regardless of market conditions, but also, I wanna take the next huge market crash and try to educate you on how you can actually perceive that market shift and take advantage of it so that you don't have to quit the business. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what this video is about. I did have one guy on social media say, the reason why I think that so many agents are gonna get out of the business is because I keep trying to teach agents to cold call. <laughs> and that cold calling is dead, it's obsolete, and that's the reason why so many agents are gonna have to quit because I'm out here telling people that they got a cold call. I'm not out here telling you that you got a cold call. I'm out here trying to help you communicate who you are as an agent, as a person, as a human being, to your prospects. I don't care if you get your leads from Zillow or online or Opsity or door knocking or social media or, I don't care where you get your leads from. I just want you to be able to understand how to communicate properly, how to show people who you are, collect their data, remarket to them, build your brand, and have the most massive business in your market. I know the only thing between you and everything you wanna achieve in this business are thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market. I'm just trying to help you get there quicker. All right, let's check these numbers out. So everybody's seen this article here that MN put out a couple months ago. The number of realtors hit new record high 2021, all right, where it basically talks about that by the end of the year in 2021, NAR had 1.559 members, up 6.92% from that date a year ago. Okay, a year ago it was 1.458. Okay, and what they realized was that a record 100,876 agents joined uh, in 2021. Okay, that's up from the all time high of 80,000 members uh, the year prior. And so, what we don't really know there, and I haven't been able to find it anywhere, is the churn rate. So, what they're saying is, is 100,000 net. That doesn't count the ones that left the business. And that doesn't count all the ones that actually join. They're just saying that they have a net positive number of 100,876 agents. Now, what I would like to show you is going back to 1908 when the National Association of Realtors had a total number of members of 1,646 members. And they had 20 local associations at that time. And so this was the beginning of NAR. And you'll see over the last 100 years, the number of agents have grown and then there was a setback. There was a correction. The first correction was the Great Depression. Okay, so it went from 1,646 agents and the peak was 23,000, 24,166. That was 1926. And then over the last next few years, it dwindled down all the way to 10,000. So it went from 24,000 agents plus to just over 10,000 agents by 1935. So we see this happen back then when we had the Great Depression that the number of agents grew up to a point. And then as the market shifted and we saw massive market cycles, the number of agents dwindled. Okay, and then from the Great Depression, we see the number of agents continue to climb all the way to 1980. Okay, 1980, it climbed all the way and had positive net uh, numbers all the way to 1980 where it had grown up to 761,391 members. Okay, and if you guys remember 1980, that was a, there was a big crash back then. And so um, 1981, 1982, the numbers went from 761,000 to 617,521. 
Okay, so they lost nearly 150,000 agents during that two year span of the market crash. Again, guys, I'm just going through history here. We're seeing cycles here. We're seeing a pattern. In 1983, as the number of agents started to rise after that crash, it went all the way to 1989, where we had a top of 822,935 members of NAR. Okay, and then the numbers started to dwindle. And so it dwindled for a good eight years, and the bottom was 716,078 agents. And so we didn't lose 100,000 that time. We lost about 95,000 agents uh, during that six year uh, time frame. So then the number of agents started to build up again, build up again, and it got to a whopping in 2006, 1,357,732 agents. And if you guys remember, we had that remarkable market run from 2002 to 2005, where we literally um, brought on an extra 500,000, more than 500,000 agents during that five-year span because the market exploded so much, a lot like what we're seeing right now. So from 2006 to 2012, okay, we lost over 350, really 360,000 agents, 360,000 agents during that time. Now, let's look at the history of from 2005 to the predictions up to 2023 of real estate transactions. Right here, we see that in 2005, we had a high of 7 million transactions in the country. And in 2006 was the year that things started to dwindle and transactions started to come down from the big crash. Everybody thinks 2008 is the big crash. 2008 was the big stock market crash, but real estate prices and real estate transactions had been coming down for several years before that. So between 2006 and 2008, we went from six to seven million transactions down to a little over four million transactions. So we lost round about a third of the transactions. If we flip back here, we realize that we had 1.357 million uh, real estate agents and it went down to a million, we lost about a third of our real estate agents. So if you realize that when we lose transactions, we normally lose in comparison the same amount of agents, and you realize that this is pretty closely correlated, it really kind of opens your eyes up to the fact that as the market does shift and we have less transactions, we're gonna lose the same amount of agents. And what's that gonna do? It's gonna produce the same amount of transactions per agent. Now, this is what I think is very interesting about our market, our current market. And that is, if you look at this graph that Statista came up with here, they actually show that the transaction started to rise from 2010, uh, it came up into the five millions. Um, last year, we hit uh, six million, over six million transactions. And if you look at 2022, they've got us predicted of losing about 5% of our transactions doing just under six million. And then in 2023, they've got us coming back up over six million. But I think what's really interesting and what I think we're actually going to see here is that even if we do lose 5% of our transactions this year, like they're saying, I think we're gonna lose a lot more than 5% of our agents. Now, if we go back to the NAR side and look at from 2012 to current, it shows us going from the million, which is what it bottomed out at in 2012, all the way up and climbing to the 1.559 million agents. So I think we're gonna have a combination of different things here. I think we're gonna have this market that shifts that scares a lot of agents that don't understand how markets work. I think that's gonna be coupled with the fact that a lot of agents are coming up on their CEs and it's time to renew their license, which means they're gonna to have to put more time in to the CEs and also put up more money to renew their, their licenses. And I think when you look at a combination of everything going on right now, we're just kind of set up to take a huge loss in number of agents. Now, going back to the agents I might be talking to who are on the fence about this or thinking about maybe this isn't for them or whatever the case may be, maybe it's not for you, okay? Maybe it's not what you thought it was and maybe that it might be the smartest thing for you to leave the business, I don't know. But let me tell you something, if you really wanna make this work, 
If this is your dream here and you're willing to do whatever it takes, I'm telling you right now, we are in some of the best moments to become a real estate agent. And I'm going to tell you why. As agents start to leave the business and you're one of the last agents standing, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're the one working to have as many conversations as you can possibly have, you're going to come out the winner and you're going to gobble up so much market share during this time. Because what's going to happen is the experienced agents, they're just going to be leaning on their, their sphere and their past clients. They're not going to be out there trying to actually build their sphere. And if they knew what was good for them, they would be out there building their sphere during this time when most agents are not. So it's, it goes back to the whole thing that the agents that are leaving the business, which is going to happen by herds, I want to save that group. Same reason I want to save the experienced agents who are not going to take advantage of the situation at hand that they could use to go build their business. They could four, five, ten x their business over the next three, four, five years, just like I did in 2008 when I got back in the business. I went out there and I worked harder than anybody to talk to the most people and guess what? By 2014, I was the number one REMAX agent in the state of Alabama. And it was all because I visualized this. I took everything that I learned in the big crash where I lost everything and I applied it to the moment. Another thing is, is that inventory is gonna come up during this time. Just think about how easy it's gonna be to sell real estate when inventory is higher and prices are lower. We've been in this high price, you know, high inflation, low interest rate, rock bottom inventory market. And think about how tough it's been. You have a buyer, you make offer, you lose. You make offer, you lose. Think about if the buyer that you have can take their pick of whichever house they want and you got sellers basically fighting over you trying to bid their own house down so that you will pick them. Now, that may be a little exaggerated, but the fact is that inventory will come up at some point. Prices are going to inch down at some point, and think about how easy that's going to be. Guys, we're about to get into the really good part of the market, and I don't want to see you leave the business. So I hope this video helped you. I hope you're listening loud and clear. I hope you apply what I said. I hope you thought about it. Shoot me a comment. I'm trying to respond to every single comment and message on every single platform. I want to touch every single one of you guys. And I just want to do my part to help everyone in the industry be a better human, be a better agent, be a better father, daughter, mother, son, dad, whatever. I want you to go out there and be the best you that you can be, right? And all we can be is all we can be. I love you guys. We'll talk to you soon.